Yes. Midweek teaching at Paradise Now Church. Time is uh, fleeting. Hey? Time is moving on. There's a lot of change, a lot of people moving, a lot of things moving. And uh, today's the 23rd of the night, 2.15. We're going to be reading out the New Testament, writings of Paul to the Corinthians. In uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 12. For we do not commend ourselves again to you, but give you opportunity to boast on our behalf that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance, not in heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. We are of sound mind. It is for you. For the love of the Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no more. Therefore, if anyone is in the Christ, he is a new creature, a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, not God. Uh, that is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to Himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, this is our final verse. We are ambassadors for the Christ, as though God were pleading through us. And we implore you on Christ's behalf to be reconciled to God. So, reconcile relates to accept. And Paul was saying here that uh, that's the message of, of the church, the message of the the disciples of the Christ, that we go forward with a message as ambassadors in chains. And we know that our chains are the restrictions or the doctrine of Jesus, which does restrict us. I was only thinking the other day about Uh, how I do not like, uh, well, I do not love my life anymore. I haven't really loved my life for the last 28 plus years because uh, I no longer live for the flesh, but for the spirit. And when that happens, we come to see what the scripture means that we live no longer for ourselves but for him he died that cruel death upon the tree for us he bought us with a prize the blood and we now must pay due respect in living for him who died for us so We're called to um, minister to the world and the people the message that says it's time you accepted Jesus who'd done so much for you. 
You have a ministry of reconciliation. Reconciling fallen humanity to back to God through Christ Jesus and his doctrine. The title of our message today is Born Once or Twice? That's the question, isn't it? Born one, are you born once or twice? If we're going to claim that we've been born twice, we better be able to um, dish up the goods if we've been born twice. And um, the word reconcile also can mean to agree. So we go forward ministering daily in whatever sector we are in, whether we're doing nine to five, whether we're doing shift work, whether we're doing street ministry, whether we're uh, unemployed or otherwise, we, we have to minister to people and talk with people and relate to people in such a manner that we endeavour to get them to agree with what we're saying and this um, hopefully would lead to godly sorrow which led it to repentance. And when we see that people do not want to agree uh, we then know that it's very possible that they can't be reconciled. They're irreconcilable people. We live in time, irreconcilable times, where people are, the character of people is so bad. And it's so not Jesus so unreliable, so dishonest. We have the list, Paul writing to Timothy, of those people, we'll have a look at that in a minute. And uh, that word reconcile, in that last verse, 2 second, second Corinthians 5, um, verse 20, we are ambassadors of the Christ, as, as if God himself was speaking through us to a lost world. Right? We need to agree with God. There's no greater insult than not to agree with God, with what God said. We know most people don't because the way they live, the way they talk, the way they walk, the way they act, they do not agree with God. They basically don't accept what God says. So we need to ask ourselves, are we born once or twice? If we're born twice, we need to be bearing that fruit of the second birth. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore if anyone anyone is in the Christ they're a new creature straight off the hatch. New creature straight off the hatch. There's, there's there can be no excuse. There's no whinging. There's no, oh, but I. But you don't know my past. You don't know what was done to me. I knew. Brand new. There's no excuses for behaving like a bogan. 
no excuses behaving like an endemic person. You've been born again. Second time. Fresh start. The Lord's giving you a fresh start. He wants to see fresh material. He wants to see a new you. Christ like you. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature, creation, new creature. Old things have passed away. Where are they? Passed away. Passed away. All things have become new. Come on in, brother. Yeah. I'd like to just. Yeah. Glory to the Lamb. Galilee Lamb. You might want to give your. To, yeah, and you can look on with. Um, yeah. Okay. We're in Corinthians today, 2 Corinthians 5, 12 to 20, and we're talking about born once or twice. Which one are we? Born once or born twice? Because our life's going to speak to people and show them if we're born once or twice. We know that born once is endemic and born twice is messianic. And we supposedly, supposedly being recon reconciled to Father through Christ's spirit and doctrine. So we need to bear that fruit, befitting. Fruit befitting repentance. We need to be going out there with the ministry of reconciliation. And I mentioned before, reconciliation relates to acceptance. We need to go out there and Prompt the people to accept the truth. Accept Jesus. Accept that they're wrong. Always. And Jesus is right. Always. When it comes to you and Jesus, you're, you are always wrong. Someone say amen. He is always right. I don't give a dog's ear what Aunt, Uncle Bill says or Dad or Mum or Grandpa. Wrong. Wrong. Jesus is right. Always. Jesus said, I am the way. Some of the time. No, I am the way. Full stop, period. That cancels out all the religions, it cancels out all the do-gooders who don't want to accept Jesus and don't want to be reconciled. There are re irreconcilable people, we know that. There are people who just don't want to accept that they've lived their life in debauchery all their life until they heard the message and then got angry with the preacher and said, I'll kill him. <laughs> or I'll do something to him. Either openly or sneakily. One way or the other. The old softest touch in town, the preacher, you know. He's the friend of the hobo and the hopeless. Yes, he is the softest touch in town. The preacher, right? If anyone is is in Christ, they're new. We, there's no complaints about, oh, but you know, where I come from, what I am, I'm black or I'm white or I'm fat or I'm skinny or 
I didn't get educated or I was too educated. And new creature, new. All on the same playing field. Jesus brings all the sheep, the noble and the humble, onto the one field. It's not a black field or a white field. It's not a, a, a intellectual field, academic field. It's not a I'm rich and you're poor field. It is a infinite field. Same level. That's the beauty of Jesus. There's no rich or poor. Male or female in the Christ. Because we're not living according to the flesh anymore. I mean, 2 Corinthians 5, 16 says, Therefore from now on we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh. The apostolic men did know Christ according to the flesh. But we don't. We know him according to the Spirit. But even those who knew him according to the flesh, to know him according to the flesh no more. But according to the Spirit. It's as the Spirit leads. As the Spirit leads. He will lead us into all truth and guide us. So, we are ambassadors for the crime with a ministry of reconciliation to bring people to a place where they will accept they're wrong and Jesus is right. They will accept there's a hell and a heaven a judgment day and a judge. They'll accept that he's not the author of eternal salvation for any man or woman in town. He's the author of eternal salvation for those who obey him. And if we don't bear fruit, we will be cut off. To get people to accept that is like trying to Remove the spots off a Dalmatian on your own. <laughs> you can't do it. Because a Dalmatian dog is a Dalmatian dog. Tell of a message today, born once or twice. If we're going to say we're born twice, we better be producing the goods and living up to it. Born twice is new creature. Old things have passed away. No trace of the old. New. New. Anyone that I met from my old life say, you're just a totally different person. You, you're, just, you're just different. New. New person. Old things and all things have passed away. Everything is new. So getting people, we're out there reconciling people back to Father because we have been reconciled and we're born twice new creatures and we know the value and the power and the joy and the peace of the second birth. We know that. We need to go forward and prompt people to resign, put up the white flag and surrender to Jesus before it's too late. And we go and minister to them, uh, believing and hoping that we will be able to bring people to a place of godly sorrow, which leadeth then to repentance and then bearing fruit of that repentance bearing fruit worthy of repentance and then bear befitting fruit fruit befitting that repentance someone say amen if you want to born once or twice we, if we're born twice we, we are 
We need to be nice people. Because many, many, most Christians, so-called Christians, I mean, they are Christian. I'm not a Christian. I'm a disciple of Jesus. But they're not very nice, you know what I mean? They've they, they got no word of honour. I despise that. People who have no word of honour. I met a bloke recently like that. He told me, you're going to do wonders with a bag of eggs and a stick, you know. And I just thought, well, maybe I'm wrong. There's just this once. Maybe I'm wrong. You know, I'm, I'm judging this man wrong. I wasn't. He's a snake. He had no word of honour. He had no respect for God because he had no respect for God's messenger. And he's got all the problems under the stars. You know? <laughs> and now you know why. And he's hanging out at some religious hovel and he's bad-mouthing them to me. Well, he's probably still there. Just slopping around in his own mud. He, he didn't depict to me, at the end of the day, everything started rosy as usual. It all starts off, you know, on the Ferris wheel, doesn't it? It's all nice. Hot dogs and honeycomb. And it all turns to lemons, doesn't it? But he wasn't nice, see? And uh, I wasn't really seeing new. I wanted to see new. You know, he'd been around the world a long time. Basic Presbyterian stuff. You know, a lot of chat and uh, coffee. But we, we if we, we're going to say we're born twice, we need to be nice people. Nice people have a word of honour. Nice people are honest. Nice people. Don't sneak around. Nice people mind their own business. Someone say amen. amen. That's nice people, you know. Nice people mind their own business, and they do their own business well. Yeah, they're always probing around, trying to find out this. Mind your own business, Dory. Yeah? Look after your own side of the fence. Please. And when you've sorted that out, go and help someone. The ugly thing. Right? Always digging around and find out, oh, trying to find out other people's private life and personal business. Yeah. You like slapping them, don't you? You know? I've got a particular prayer I pray. It's called the slap prayer. I'm not going to tell you what it entails, but it's, it's for those who I, I just love to give a slap, you know. I thought, no, nah, I can't do that, so I got to, I'll just get into my slap prayer. And then the Lord sorts it. Lovely, isn't it? I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. All things have passed away, I've been born again. I'm more than a conqueror. Nice people have that new look, you know, that new thing happening. They're new. They're not like the old. They're not like they used to be. They're, they're new. N-I-C-E. The I is for um, inheritance. New people, twice born people, they get around like they have an infinite inheritance. They're not tight wads. 
They're not whinging. You know? We have to carry that air with us. We have to carry that with us, that we are of infinite quality substance. Well, Jesus is the substance and he is in us, in Christ, any one in Christ, and Christ is in in finite. Right? Not moldy oldy, in finite inheritance, you know. That's sort of that's quite the opposite of like squeezing a lemon to get a smile, you know. It's, it's so many these churchgoers and churched people who sort of you know, I cringe to look at them. You know, they're just so bound and unhappy and bitter and you know it, terrible just not new so not new born once or twice we're the born twice people we know what's good for us we have an in, infinite inheritance to look forward to doesn't that make you happy doesn't that make you happy you know God is so good. Father is so good. We're looking to move in the next season. And the Lord's he's just making a way where there is no way. You know? I just shake my head. There's no sweat on the brow, I can tell you. And, you know, it's just sweet. Um, yeah, eat the fat and, and drink the sweet. We have to live like we have an in, in, in finite inheritance. You know? The apostles lived and, and portrayed people who had an infinite inheritance where they were heading. If we just go over to Hebrews for a minute. Hebrews. That's the way they lived, you know. That's the way they lived. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Hebrews 11. I'm going to start in verse 13. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the move on the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they have no homeland here on planet earth. They seek a homeland. And truly if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they'd have golden opportunity to return to their old ways. But now, 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 their desires are for better things, even heavenly things. Glory, hallelujah. Therefore, Yahweh is not ashamed to be called their God, for he, Jesus, has prepared a city for them. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you so. But because it is so, I go and I prepare a place for you. Jesus speaking. Hey? Glory. They walked in Holy Ghost integrity, these people. Right? Not seeing, but seeing. Right? Afar off. Glory. Hallelujah. They walked in that infinite inheritance. They knew where they were going. They knew that the things of this earth were so dim in the, in the second birth, you know. The things of the world become strangely dim. 
in the light of his doctrine and power and grace. Eh? When we go into the word and when we receive what he's given via Calvary and we walk into that newness and freshness, every day is a jubilee day. Eh? Every single day is jubilee. All your needs he will meet according to his riches and glory through the Christ's way. Everything. There's no begging and scraping and trying to work things out. Uh, it's just, hey, um, I'm in Christ now. He's in me and I'm in him. Hey? And we're in the infinite scene. <laughs> we're in the zenith. <laughs> Eh? As the three are one, we are one with him in unison, in agreement, reconciled back to God, in agreement. Whatever you say, it, you're the boss. And not begrudgingly, but lovingly saying, you're leading here, you're, you're, you're calling the shots. I no longer live for me, Lord, but for you who died for me upon the tree. Cruel death. Glory. Lovely. Hey? And him making that way. Hey? Oh, glory, glory. Just winging our way back home. <laughs> Second Corinthians 5. Verse 12, for we do not commend ourselves again to you, but give you opportunity to boast on our behalf that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance. See, all these Pharisees out there. And not in heart. They're near to God uh, with, with, uh, with their lips, but their heart is far from him. They're so earthbound. They're, they're so bogged down and, and, and dug into this earth. In the things of this earth, you will not even see any sign of pilgrimage in their lifestyle. Or even strangers. Much rather friends of the world. Rather than strangers, outcasts in the world. Born once or born twice. This is it. If we're going to be saying we're born twice and born again and in him, following the Christ, we need to bring forth that new, that new, new you. Because he's made me feel brand new. And we need to walk in a manner that people say, hey, Anyone would think he had uh, bottomless pockets or a bottomless wallet. Anyone would think that he was uh, looking forward to something great. <laughs> new heavens and new earth where righteousness dwells. Glory to the Lamb. Nice people, not grubby, not grubby people, not edemic. Edemic people are dishonest. Endemic people see no reason to be honest. They're blind. They think honesty is foolishness. They think when someone does something nice for you, oh, that they have become your master or something. <laughs> That's how stupid they are. Because they don't know what nice people are. Nice people are saints. New creatures. It's sort of like a competition in the world. The more you can get other people to do for you, the bigger person or wiser person you are. Not so. That's that's not the wisdom of God. That's stupidity. That's selfishness and the demon. We should be looking for people to serve.
nice people, N I C, nice people are content. You know, you ever been around people that aren't content? Oh, it's a pain. You know, it's so whingy, isn't it? It's all like that. It's like that. It's like that. Please, just shut up and make the tea. You know. <laughs> Just go and get me some burgers, please. No. Content, right? With much or content with little. Nice people, you know. People in Christ, new creatures are, are content because you got it all. Hey? Right? Jesus done it all for me. Up there upon the tree. Gave up the ghost and gave us the victory. Nothing's been left undone. Everything, everything's been done. Every, we are content to know that he's got the reins, that he's leading. We're content to know, thus says the Lord. We've got somewhere to go every minute of the day. Anytime we want to sit down and have a coffee or a tea, have a Kit Kat or whatever, we can sit down and open the Word and we'll find He will meet us there every time. He's not too busy. He's omnipresent. He's omnipresent. That means He can minister to 60 billion people at once. He can be there with 60 billion people at the same time with tick of the clock. Hey? That's doing a bit better than old Buddha, isn't it? <laughs> doing a bit better than Mother Teresa or Billy Graham or the Illuminati or anyone else. Hey, this is what we're going out to tell people about. We're going out to tell them and reconcile them back to the almighty Saviour, creator of heaven and earth, all things seen and unseen, Hosanna in the highest of places. We go out to get people to agree with that. Whenever I'm on the street, I always say, <coughs> I let the people have their say, and I say, well, what do you think about this? Do you agree with that? And they say, no. I say, oh, right on. Okay. I might think about, I might be able to come another way here. <laughs> what do you think about this? Do you, do you agree with that? No. Oh, and after about the tenth, do you agree? I say, well, I certainly agree with the word that says you're irreconcilable. <laughs> at present, at present, at present, you're irreconcilable. You're headstrong, haughty, unteachable, ungodly, lover of pleasure, not lover of God. You're a lover of yourself. And you might even have a form of godliness, but you're always denying the power of the Holy Ghost in your life. So the Lord tells me not to keep company with you. I must go my way. Bye. Next. <laughs> with such people, do not keep company. Yeah. Nice people are content. That's why they're nice. You know, nice to be around. You know, this might sound partial, but you know, my son, brother Shadrach, he, he's nice to be around because he's content. You know, would you like some of this? Whatever, Dad. Whatever you think. Whatever. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I like that. You can hang out with me, Shadrach, anytime you want. He's nice. You know what I mean? He's content. He knows he has an infinite inheritance. He's not, you know, flustered. He's chill. That. <laughs> <coughs> I don't see a lot of the old me there, you know. He's not a chip off the old block. He's a new creature. And uh, when I water baptized him, he wanted to go through again because something happened there in the water. <laughs> he said, oh, that's so wonderful. Can we do it again, Dad? Something happened in there. Something happened. And now I know he touched me. And he made me whole. See? Even my son was a leper, and my daughter Hannah, but they 
agree with Jesus. You know? They agree with everything he said. Everything I, I can't say anything. I said, what do you think about that, Chad? Spot on, Dad. I can get the most so-called heaviest articles I've ever written. You know, a lot of judgment, fire, brimstone, and stuff in there. <coughs> and Shadrach would say, "Wow, it's so, so Jesus. You know, that's just, yeah, so you, Dad. You really, <laughs> you're not holding back on that one. But you know, likes it." Yeah, Brother Shadrach was in the city yesterday with a friend. He just reminiscing, you know, walking through the city and reminiscing. Uh, that's where my dad and I used to print, you know. <laughs> but when he said it to me, he said, "I showed him where I used to print, where we used to print." He said, "Well, actually, you preach and you know, I was with, you. I was with you, you know." Just walking through the park and reminiscing down at the square there, you know. Yeah. Born once or twice, it's got to sort of bring out that new nice person. And I see E, e is for enmity. You know, we don't have any war going on with God. You know, it's all sweet. We don't, we're not at enmity. We're not at war with God. We're, we're you know, we we got the chill factor. We're back there, you know, yes. We know your way, Lord. We know what you expect and we know what we have to do. Just say jump. We won't ask why. We ask our why. Whatever you want, I'm here to serve. Whatever's going to be, you know. And um, Romans 8. Let's have a quick look there in Romans 8. Born once or twice. Oh, I tell you what, that's our message. We go out there to prompt the people, tell the people, say, look, you can be born again. You can be born twice. And then this time you'll be born free, as free as the wind blows. As free as the grass grows, born free to follow the Christ. Born free to agree with the Christ. Born free to accept the Christ. Then you'll be able to live free, for no sin will hold you. Romans 8, verses 7. The carnal mind, the Adamic mind is at war with God just as Adam and Eve were. For it is not submitted to the way of God, nor can it ever be. The damage is done. Hey? Every sin is like a setting sun. Hold the damage down. Oh, the damage is done. Every sin is the same. The damage is already done. We must be born twice. Second time. We must agree with the Lord because that's the word of the Lord in John chapter 3. You must be born twice. Right? You must be, you must be born twice. I tell you now. You must be born again. Because the carnal mind, the Adamic mind, is at war. Forever wrestling. I mean, we need to ask ourselves. Paul's ministering to Corinthian saints here. He's ministering, hey, he's, I believe he's saying, hey, uh, you need to uh, have a look at yourself. I implore you to be reconciled to God. 2 Corinthians 5, 20. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, as we implore you, 
on Christ's behalf be reconciled. Made him who knew no sin to become sin, or take our sin upon himself, that we may have the righteousness of Father through Jesus' work at the cross. So we must bring forth, we must have, you know, we are um, portraits. We're portraits of his love. Hey, that's what we are. We're portraits of God's love. When we're out there, it's just, oh, I'm feeling this. You know? Yeah. We're those new creatures, individual, um, personalised portraits of, of Christ himself, of his love. I mean, the world gets their glory and... You know, surgeons and you know, someone's got a half a nose or something and they restore the nose and they've got the before and after look, you know, happening. They go, oh, he must be a good surgeon. Or, you know, something happened in an accident and he's got a um, leg put on or stitched on or something and they go, wow, that's pretty cool. But they can't sort of move it, it's just sort of there, you know. Right? And that's plastic, you know. And everyone's glorifying. We're, we're here to bring glory to Jesus. So I remember that guy. I remember the one. You know. I remember that guy, he was a drunk, he's a chain smoker, he's this, he's that, he used to do this, he used to do that. But that's all past, it's all, everything's new now. I remember, it brings glory. We're here to. to to glorify God. That's why we were made. We were made for God. I was made for love and you, Jesus. You were made for love and me. Can't get enough of you, Jesus. I think he's had enough of me. So if we've been born twice, we should be the nice people. We should be the nice people in the district. Nice according to Jesus, that is. 2 Corinthians 5.14 It's the Christ's love that has me speaking like this and to make judgment as we do it's Christ's love other people judge different ways you know I reckon this and I reckon that that's because they haven't been reconciled <laughs> that's why they reckon oh, I reckon you know I reckon you're wrong and I reckon that's oh. Now you reckon the one that told me this is wrong. And you know who that is? That's the one who made you. Do you hear me, you ugly thing? You reckon the one that told me this is wrong? I reckon you're a lunatic. Because Jesus is always right. He ain't never wrong. You know, but we still have plenty of lunatics in the house, don't we? <laughs> the lunatic is in the house. 2 Corinthians 5.14 It's the love of Christ that's done this to me. It's the love of Christ. Hey? It's the love of Christ that's done this to me. compels us because we judge like this, we talk. When you judge, you make a statement. Right? We're not self-opinionated, we're messianic opinionated. We're not self-opinionated. Endemic people are self-opinionated. Their opinion is their opinion. Right? 
But because we've been reconciled, we don't reckon this or reckon that. We speak as the reconciled ones. Someone say amen. You can say why or why. I mean, you could probably put this in the uh, decrease category, couldn't you? You sort of go well in the decrease book. Okay? Like sort of uh, companion message to decreasing. The love of Christ compels us because we have taken on this manner of seeing things. That if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all. That those who live should live no longer. And how many ministers and churches tell the people that? You know? That there's no one left out. No, so oh, well they committed this sin, or or, just, or he was a pedophile. He can't be forgiven, or that one was a, a molester, or a murderer, mass murderer, killed 110,000 people, you know, in genocide. Doesn't matter who you are. He died for all, so that all those people could live for him. No longer for themselves. That's our message. That's our beautiful, loving, kind, nice message. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 5. And he died for all that those... Uh, 2 Corinthians 5.15. Died for all that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them. And rose again. Therefore... Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. If you did, if you regarded people according to the flesh, you'd be going back into the Adamic. You'd be doing a Galatian saints, you know, you'd be going backwards into days, months and seasons. You'd be getting back into, well, I reckon and I reckon. And, you know, our religion reckons. I got my own religion. Of course you have, you ugly thing. <laughs> I have, but I don't have any religion. I have the righteousness of the Creator, the Yahweh, through the Christ out working at the tree. Someone say amen. amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2 Corinthians 5, 15. He died for all. Not, that just wipes out Calvinism, doesn't it? Hello. Old Calvin. I oh, know there's only a certain people in there. Died for all. That those who would live... That those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore... From now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. If anyone is in Christ, they're new. So everyone comes to the same place, <coughs> the new. We all come to the new place. And if we all come to the new place and you have ten people in the one room and they're all in the new place and they're all nice people, it's just going to be a taste of heaven, isn't it? But there's someone in there that's a demicking out. If there's an Adam in the place or an Eve, you've got problems. There'll be a fraction too much friction, won't there? Right? Yes. You know, there'll be the rolling of the eyes. Or, oh, I can't wait to get out of here. Or, I won't be coming back here. Or... Um, you know, there'll be something Adamic going down, for sure. Even though you have to leave the North Shore, you know, to please the Lord, it's for sure. No longer living at the North Shore, forward slash Sydney, no. Oh, but I'll lose my image. What was that? You're going to lose more than that, friend. 
you're going to follow Jesus, you won't just lose your image. Right? <laughs> he, he wants you to lose you totally, full stop. <laughs> he wants you to die all, never to be seen again. That they'll just see Christ. They'll just see a nice person. They'll just see a new person. They'll just see a person who gets around like they've got an infinite inheritance. They just see a content person. See a person that doesn't wrestle with God, forward slash his word. That everything that's said is yea and amen to this new person. They say, oh, but, you know, you know, like, surely God wouldn't want me to do this. What does it say? What does the word say? Does it say that Jesus comes second to mum? Or dad or the children? What does it say? Or cultural tradition? What does it say? Don't ask me. Read it for yourself. If you have the Spirit, the Spirit will interpret it, what you read. Perfectly. Perfectly. Without blemish. <laughs> eh? uh, yes. Born once or born twice. Born free, hey? born again, great and mighty is our Lord. Yes. If anyone is in Christ, they are new. I don't know where these lunatics get casting demons out of people who've been born again. That is not the message of Jesus because the moment we're in him and born again, we are new. Right? And the demon thing is basically putting new wine into the old skin, isn't it? Huh? But it's not, it's a new skin. So all this sin that's dwelling there is in the old skin, isn't it? Hell O. <laughs> new wine in the new skin. It's not new wine in the old skin. Because there's excuses with new wine in the old skin. We're in the spirit now. And we don't know each other after the flesh. We know each other after the spirit. We know each other as as born twice people. We don't know each other in the flesh because there can be no reconciling, true reconciling of people who are born once. You know, there's a lot of people out there, they're only born once. And they really do believe that they're friends, but you'll find there's something not right. And that's scary, isn't it? It's real endemic. See, the humanity cannot really be true until they're born again. A true blue. And it's manifesting daily. You know, it's sort of like unseen in 2.15, isn't it? Amazing. Sort of just catapults you towards your brothers and sisters in the spirit, doesn't it? But as long as we live in that old wineskin attitude, we just never, never progress. And the perils of progressing are great. Perils of progressing, I should say the perils of not progressing are great. Perils of not progressing is basically not bearing the characteristic fruits of crime. That could be a termination of life now. Eternal. You know, living death. Forever. So, as Adamic people, 
we, we really can't be trusted because there's so much self-serving in the Edemic culture and character. Re Eve wasn't honest with Adam. She just demanded that he eat and he was weak enough to eat. See? The moment she got a bite of that fruit, whatever it was, she then put it straight on Adam. He wasn't honest. And dragged him into it too. And how many times do you have that? All through your life as an endemic man, I used to have so-called friends. I thought they were my friends. They just dragging me deeper and deeper into the abyss. And then my mother or my dad would say something and I, I'd get angry with them and start hating my mum and dad. Because they said something I didn't want to hear because I was a demic. But they had been around the Adamic scene longer than me and they knew that those were not my friends. Sad, isn't it? That's why we must go out there with the message of reconciliation and be brought back to God and be brought back to people of God and be brought back to be the people of God. And God is not dishonest and God is not meaning any harm to you. Because God is love and love does no harm to a neighbour. Love, love does not harm you or your possessions or anything. He doesn't steal from you. Love doesn't do that. When you have the love of God, you don't do that to your neighbour. You don't damage your neighbour's goods. You don't steal your neighbour's goods. You don't covet your neighbour's goods. You, 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 you don't... Uh, Put your neighbour down. Only a fool does that. The scriptures say, the Proverbs, only a fool puts their neighbour down. You don't know when you might need that neighbour. We must be wise as a snake, harmless as a pigeon. Yeah? So, the Adamic is the first birth and the second birth is the Messianic. It's very hard to get on side with the Adamic because they're with you today and they're not tomorrow. But the new birth and the new people and the reconciled ones should be the same. Should be the same. Not like my Presbyterian friend who I met recently and he was all with me in the presence of me but then after that everything just fell apart and he's like another person sad isn't it did not answer my calls did not answer my texts did not answer anything and let me tell you why because the materials and literature that I sent him basically said come over here my friend and sit on the operating table and he didn't want to do that he didn't want to do that so he thought I'll fix him I just won't answer and he thought well I'll get into my disrespectful mode now well you wonder why you got a cigarette hanging out of your mouth and claiming Christ you wonder why you live like that. You wonder why you bad mouth in your fellowship and to me and I don't even know you. It's all Adamic, isn't it? It's not new. And he didn't make me feel brand new. <laughs> twice, not religious, twice born, born afresh, new. Nice people. Saintly people. Not a chip off the old block. We can't afford to even have a chip of the old man on our shoulder. We can't afford to have anything of the old man. Because it's new wine, new skin, new wine skin, new wine. New start, new you. Heavenly you. 
saintly you, not traditionally you, or culturally you, or or bloodline you, or nationality you, no, new you. If you want to be in the family of God, you got to shake all that stuff off like a serpent. And then you don't go to church and say, oh yeah, well we, we, we have a Chinese person in our church and we have a Japanese person in our church and we have a, you know, someone from Ireland in our church. No, you just go and say, oh well, we have saints. You don't see them as Japanese or turning Japanese. You don't see them as English or or African or Samoan or Tongan. You just see them as your brother and your sister. You don't see them as any colour. You don't see them as any nationality or tradition or anything because they don't have any. They're new. Plastic still on the doors. Manual of Emmanuel in the glove box. Someone say Amen. amen. Yeah. And they, 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 they've had that second birth and it's all new. Fresh start, new. No longer hanging on to and clinging to some old uh, wild vine. But abiding in, in, in the vine. In the Christ. And Father being the dresser. And he would tell you how to dress. Because right? he's the vine dresser. Father. You don't have everything hanging out everywhere. Right? I'll look at my six pack. Uh, who gives a rat if you've got a six pack or you've got a wine barrel? I mean, what's that going to do with the judgment stand? It ain't going to do jack for you at the judgment stand if you've got triceps coming out of your ears. <laughs> you know what I mean? It ain't going to do nothing. Without a spot, blemish or wrinkle. Eh? And only decrease can get rid of the wrinkles and then all the creases. Amen? Only acknowledging that we don't live for ourselves anymore but for Him. We are not our own. That we die off daily. Two Corinthians five and the verses. 19, that is, that God was in the Christ. Father was in the Christ, reconciling the world to himself. Not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. And everything about the word is reconciliation. Everything about it. Every scripture you can find is to get people back to God. Everything in the Word is about agreeing with God. That's why you just uh, quote a few scriptures and if people don't agree with it, not with you, with the scripture. You know they're not reconciled. Because the the word of reconciliation or the word of God is yea and amen to the believer. Always yea and amen. You've got no arguments. There can't be any buts, ifs, maybe, could be, I don't know. It, what does it say? What does it say here? Let's have a look at the scripture. Okay? And he is the, the author of eternal salvation for those who obey. How can you argue with that? Only the unreconciled and the irreconcilable will argue with that. They haven't been reconciled. They haven't been brought back. They're not with God. God's not with them. 
When you argue with scripture, you're not arguing with a preacher, you're arguing with God himself, because he is the word. Any scripture you care, John 15 too, any branch in me, any branch in me, that does not bear fruit. I cut it off. And we're doing it in him here. We're doing it in him. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they're a new creature. John 15, 2 says, any branch, anyone in, in me that does not bring forth the fruit, the nice people fruit. Can you say amen? You don't bring, bring forth that fruit. He's going to cut you off because you're ashamed. You're, you're an embarrassment to him. He can't have that dead branch on the vine. It makes it look shabby. Can you say amen? <laughs> he said, the vine dresser sees that and says, oh dear, man. What's that? Tink. Oh, get rid of that. Throw it in the fire. Put it in that pile over there and we'll burn that loner. Huh? But yet they argue with it. The, the, the jolly Baptists and all the rest of them say, oh no, that, that one in John 15 too, they didn't really know God. Oh, look, please. What does it say? And don't even bother to go to the Greek, Hebrew and Aztecian. Because the Holy Ghost is the one that's leading and guiding when you read Scripture. If you have the Spirit. If you have the Spirit of Christ dwelling in you, you will read the Scripture and He will speak to you. He will minister to you. And you can go home and anyone listening to this message worldwide, you can listen to this message over and over and over again and I guarantee you, if you can find doctrinal error, please tell me and rebuke me and judge me because I want to be a better person. Someone say amen. amen. Or oh my, or oh what? <coughs> 2 Corinthians 5. And the verse is 19. That is, God was in the Christ, Father was in the Christ, reconciling the world to himself. See that? Father is forever trying to get people to agree with him. Reconcile. And the the, the instrument is the sword of the Spirit. You see that there? Look at it. 2 Corinthians 5.19 God, Father, was in the Christ reconciling the world to himself. See? Father was using the word. Father uses the word <coughs> to find out who's going to agree with him. And who's not going to agree? To agree means reconcile. Father uses the word. Hebrews uh, 4.12 Alive and living. The word of God. Alive, living, sharp and to it, sword, discerning, uh, severing bone from marrow, soul from spirit, discerning the thoughts and intentions. What are your intentions? Of the heart. He sees if you're going to receive and agree and accept what Jesus says. The doctrine of Jesus, which is Father's doctrine. Father ministering through the Christ. The doctrine of the Christ. Reconciling, wanting the world to agree, wanting the people in the world to repent and to agree with him that he is the way to do it. Someone say amen. amen. Okay. Born once or twice. We go home and, and we can sit back and we can ask ourselves, am I born twice or once? This is a good uh, litmus test, isn't it? Okay. 
This is a Holy Ghost litmus test. If we're born once or twice. I give you all the glory, Jesus, and everybody said, Amen. And Amen, and Amen. Thank you, Jesus.